Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we are going to talk about setting up LibreOffice for better control of the system, how you want your word processor platform to work when you're getting ready to write your manuscripts or format your manuscripts for the printers. So welcome back, I'm Tom Morosky. I'm an author and a technology consultant, and on this channel at Writing Done Right, we will teach you how to not only write your books, but also how to produce your books and get them out for printing, whether you're going to Ingram or whether you're going to KDP or various other places. We wanna teach you the skills to do professional book production without having to hire out the external sources. Now, of course, if you're just a writer, you're going, this is all interesting, I would like to hire the outside sources, feel free to reach out to me on the contact form. I will actually help you format those manuscripts uh, and uh, we'll get you a, a decent quote to do that. So today's video, we're gonna talk more about LibreOffice. Of course, this is what I use for my writing and also for producing the books and getting them ready to go to the printer. Now, LibreOffice is a cross-platform system, so whether you're on Windows or whether you're on Mac, or like me, I use Linux, then you can use LibreOffice for free on your system to write your books, produce your books, and export the PDFs to send out to the printer. Now, on the default build, it actually has the older school menu bar. So if you're a little bit older, uh, like I am, and you grew up on, you know, Word 95 or somewhere around there, anything before Word 2003, then uh, they actually had, the toolbars were much more customizable. I like that. I can customize my toolbars. I can add the things that I use on a regular basis. I can take out the things I don't use on a regular basis and I don't have to spend any time hunting through ribbons. But as things change, the ribbon has become a big popular thing in Microsoft Office, and a lot of people have come to really like that ribbon. And so in the more recent versions of LibreOffice, starting with version 6.2, you can now enable that ribbon format, so if that is the way that you like to write, you can actually use that method. So on this video, we're gonna go over to the computer, I'm gonna show you how to enable that ribbon mode. We're also gonna look at themes, and the one thing LibreOffice does not have out of the box is a grammar editor, but there is actually a free and open source tool called Language Tool, which will give you a grammar editor very much like Microsoft Office has in it, so you can have that grammar editor functionality working. Of course, there's some other tools, like I have an affiliate link for Pro Writing Aid, which is a more professional, very much like Grammarly uh, system that you can actually use in your system as well. And I prefer Pro Writing Aid uh, because as a free and open source person, I actually read those terms of service and Grammarly you are granting them the full control of everything that you write on that computer. Pro Writing Aid, you don't. They're not interested in what you actually type into the tool. So there's an affiliate link for that in the description of this video, so go ahead and check that out. Um, the last thing we're gonna do is, you might not like the default style that is done for manuscripts. Now, this is for me a temporary thing. I don't usually adjust it very much because your formatting of your manuscript is done in the production phase, not in the authoring phase. But you might want to change your style defaults around. I'll show you how to do that. This builds on our templating tutorials that we've already done. And this time we're actually going to apply a default template so then when you start up the program itself, then you will actually have a, uh, you will actually have a, uh, a new template that's based on what you want to start with. So those are the things we are gonna do. Three very quick and very simple things and we're gonna jump on over to the computer to finish up. Okay, so here we are on the computer. Now, we are gonna solve a couple of issues. Now, we are going to want to be on LibreOffice version 6.2 or later. As of the time I'm recording this, I believe 6.4 is out. So if you're downloading this for Windows or Mac, you will probably be getting the 6.4 version. You have the option to go back to the 6.3, I think, as well. And so uh, if you are on Linux, so like I am, you might have an older version, 6.0, 6.1 in your repos, in which case you're going to want to upgrade to a more recent version. I have videos on my other channel about how to do that. I'll go ahead and uh, link those here, but that's a very specific niche Linux case, and you probably already know how to do that. Um, but for the rest of us, uh, just make sure you're on 6.2 or later, of course, in LibreOffice. You can check under the help menu or, of course, in Mac under your, your um, about, you know, about window. 
Uh, so here I'm on version 6.2.8.2 so we can solve these issues. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to address the templating. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So here I have in raw text the first chapter of the Synaptergy science fiction novel. If I paste this in, this is what the default styling on LibreOffice looks like. It is atrociously ugly. We want to do some things differently here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we need to make a change to the default template style. Now on Linux here, it's going to be difficult to change that without accessing the file as root, which we can do. But I'm not going to do that in this video because it's a little bit more advanced and it's probably not going to be uh, relevant to most people watching the video if you're using a Windows or a Mac. So what we're just going to do is we're just going to do a default style uh, and just do a new default style and just set that as the default. That way this old version is still there in the system files. That's going to work universally no matter which platform you are using. So we're going to start with this and you can actually change everything down if you want. We could go down and do text body instead, which you'll see looks a little bit different. But by default, default style is what's used. So this is what we're going to do is we're just going to change default style. So let's go ahead and modify this. So this is just going back to the same tips that we were using before. And um, in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a couple little changes. The first is let's go ahead and, and uh, give us some line spacing below the paragraph. So this means that each paragraph will have a little bit of a spacing. And I find, let's try 0.2, see how that looks. So that's, uh, that's a lot. Let's go ahead and go maybe 0.4. So that's good. So each paragraph now has a little bit of spacing back there that you can see. Now the next thing you might want to do is indent the first line. And this is something that on an old school computer you might use a tab on a typewriter. You might have... Um, you might have done some tabs, you might have done uh, some spaces depending on your style of typewriter and how old school it was. Now this is funny for me because I'm in a, uh, a writer's critique group and uh, the one comment I keep getting back is your first line should be indented, of course, from the writing teacher, which is cool. Uh, but I'm like, I keep on telling her though, no, we don't do those because that's handled by the software in the book formatting. But just so I don't hear that anymore, I'm just going to go ahead and indent the first line in the software so you don't have to do this by hitting tab or by hitting spaces or anything else. So there, now we've indented the first line of the paragraph. And of course, who wants to read a draft on single spacing? I find double to be too much. I find double distracting and actually hard to read. I actually do one and a half is what my preferred is. You can uh, choose from, you know, like this is not too bad. One and a half is decent for this. Or you can do things like proportional where you're saying a certain amount. So, you know, here's 115% of the line spacing. So you can do any of those types of things. Let's just go ahead and do this. Now, the problem is if we save this as a template now, it saves with all of this amazing text. Oh, glorious. We don't want to do that, so we're just going to delete everything. Select all, just delete. Now that we have a blank style with our default, now we're going to go up into our file menu and templates, and you can remember the save as template. So let's just go into uh, my templates, and we're just going to call this guy default to... Now this time, unlike the last time, this time we are going to set as default template. Go ahead and save it. Close Libre Writer down. We're not going to save that document. And let's just go ahead and open it back up. Now we just have a basic default template. But now look at that. Now our templating is fixed. You can, of course, toggle the defaults around manually by going into your templates, manage templates, and then, of course, hey, here's the one that we did on the one video. Um, down into the styles, here's default. We can do all categories. So you can see there's the default too. This is the original default, which you can right click and set as default again if you want. But this icon up here indicates that this is our default one for this. So now this is our default too. So anytime you just open up LibreOffice, you're going to have this style set up. Okay. So that is solving the first problem of making your first drafts very easy to read by setting yourself a new default template. Second problem is LibreOffice actually does not have a grammar editor out of the box. So to solve this problem, we're actually going to use a, another free and open source application that is called Language Tool. 
So Language Tool has a plugin uh, for for this. So let's just go ahead and go to Language Tool. Now you can purchase some Language Tool options. I think it's .org is the one we want. Language there is a Language Tool.com. It's the same company. It's just more they're more commercial end. So over here, hit your Add-ons menu up at the top. Find LibreOffice. And then down here, you can find the download for LibreOffice. So if you just go ahead and open it with LibreOffice, it should know what to do with it. Let's just go ahead and give that a test. So when it's done with its download, you see it's got 30 seconds left, maybe a little bit less. Uh, when it's done, it should open itself up and know exactly what to do with itself. So this is going to give us the ability to check and edit our grammar as well. So this is what I use as a good first pass. Now, again, I do have a, uh, a tool, an affiliate link, which is called Pro Writing Aid. And uh, Pro Writing Aid is like Grammarly, except they have a much better privacy policy where you're not giving the company a license to use anything you type into your computer. That's why I recommend Pro Writing Aid. There's a uh, link for that down below. That's going to be a little bit better, but this is going to be good for first drafts. All right, so it says you are about to install the extension. Click OK to proceed. So we're going to go ahead and hit proceed. And you can see that it's all set up there. We can disable it if we want to because it's selected. We're just going to go ahead and close and restart. Let's not save the document. Go ahead and get writer restarted. And then we'll see that we will have a grammar editor in here. Now, I'm not sure which version this is. It may or may not actually have some grammar edits. We might also have to adjust some things here. So uh, there's language tool options. I think I've actually done a pretty good job of editing this up to this point in time. I think this must be my latest version. So I'm not seeing grammar errors. There probably are still some, but um, you can, of course, go into your tools and extension manager um, is how you can access it. This is where you can add some new ones. If you want to manually add it, uh, just navigate to the file uh, and then navigate to the file and uh, click it and it will open itself up. No Wrong button. I did not mean to try that. <laughs> no, don't do that. Um, I'll fix that later. Uh, restart later. Uh, I'll go ahead and fix that later. But anyway, so that's going to add your green underlaying there. Bad example because I already edited this thing within an inch of its life. So uh, we will have grammar edits up here. Let's see. He said this. Okay, you can see that we got our blue underlining, meaning that there's something there. Uh, he said that. He said nothing. This should trigger three sentences starting with the same letter. So three consecutive sentences begin with the same word. We can ignore it. We can ignore the rule. Uh, we can set it for various things and inside of our options. Uh, document language. Oh, I need to set the document language setting. Okay, so if you encounter that issue where um, where your language tool says it cannot edit the tools for this option, it's because the language is not set in the document. So under here, under language, um, you want to come over here. So for all text, hit USA English or pick whatever language you're, you're using. Uh, when you have a language set, now you can right-click and you can do the language tool options. So here are a variety of different things using the default uh, document language, or you can set the language explicitly to some other uh, language that is in the system. So you can go ahead and do that. Here's the various grammar rules. So you can narrow in on what the grammar rules happen to be. There's some style rules. And then there's some underlining rules. So you can see you'll either have green or uh, blue underlines, depending on what they are. Occasionally, you'll get some that are like this and you don't see anything there. Those oftentimes clear themselves up. Um, this is a, a tool that is in development, but it does a pretty good job for getting everything set up right. All right, so the last thing we are going to look at is the toolbar. And the reason we're going to do this last is because I actually don't like it and I don't actually know how to use the system very well under it. Uh, so let's look at just go ahead and fix that though for you guys that do want that. So this is going to be under your view and user interface. And then depending on your version, 6.4 will have a lot more options here. But starting in 6.2, we have tabbed as an option. So this will change it into uh, basically the same thing that we will have under Microsoft Office. So you can see here, 
Uh, we have the different tabs. Now, if you're like, I actually did that and I got to get back. How do I get back? I don't understand. There's three bars over here at the end of the screen. Pull this guy down. You can set your user interface right back. So you can go ahead and use the tabs or not use the tabs, depending on which uh, method you like the most. So there is just kind of getting your, uh, your interface set up with LibreOffice. Uh, just having everything all set up, make sure you're setting those languages, installing the plugins, uh, setting the defaults, things like that. So hopefully this video will help you to get your writing done right. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Go ahead and give me some comments in the video. Let me know if this was, was helpful or not, and uh, let me know if you want more videos like this. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that this video has helped you to get your writing done right.